Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Flexi webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today. Our presenter is Aaron Clapp, Application Specialist at SAI. He knows everything there is to know about Flexi, and today he'll be walking us through a complete contour cutting workflow. After the presentation, we'll be able be able to answer any questions you have either about contour cutting or any other flexi topic. So feel free to put those questions in the chat and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always. So if you want to review anything that Aaron discusses or share it with someone else, we'll be sending you all the link to the recording this afternoon. So look out for that. And I think we're ready to get started. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Aaron. All right, sounds good. So we've had some new uh, features in the contour cut area come out and we wanted to kind of blend this all together into kind of a one stop shop for all the things contour cut right and so why don't we go ahead and just start out with a very basic workflow we're going to start out with you know contour cut with a vector object contour cut with a bitmap and how you handle that we'll send it to the production manager and what to expect there, what to see, set up your settings, things like that. And then we'll get into some alternative workflows that you might run into or you might uh, uh, want to consider or look at as well. So let's go ahead and import uh, a, a couple of vector files here and just walk through a real simple workflow on importing a file and, and getting that in um, quickly and setting up our contour cut. So let's go ahead and pull out a couple of these. Okay, so we have a couple of graphics here that we're gonna just simply do a contour cut on and kind of work through the basic process of contour cutting. Uh, this applies to anything that you create in Flexi or you import. Uh, we can always apply a contour cut to it. So kind of one of the things to, and the reason why I chose these two graphics are, are very specific. Um, this one here kind of has a very generic outline to it. But uh, let's go ahead and apply a contour cut to it under the FX menu. And under Design Central here, we've got our options. So if we want to do a contour, this obviously contours to the shape of the object and uh, is going to get us as close as possible to the edge. So we can adjust that here uh, this way and we can kind of get that as close as we want. And uh, you can see here that we can go all the way to zero, even in, into a negative. So if you ever wanted to do a, uh, a bleed or a cut or print an excess print, with uh, the cut going slightly into the color so that you make sure that you don't have any white showing, uh, you can go negative on this value as well. If we apply with holes, this will apply the contour cut to the inside of text. So if you have letters and things like that that need those holes, uh, you can apply that as well. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really do anything for us uh, because uh, our text and whatnot is colored and, and there's not real a clear holes uh, pattern here. Although, yeah, so you can kind of see that it tries to do some stuff here, but because of our outlines and the text that we have, the with holes doesn't really work in this case. But if we had text that was a little more normal, kind of like over here, uh, those holes would be cut out as well. Uh, one of the things to remember about contour cutting is if, with the, if we always recommend using the contour cut colors. So this is why we've provided four of them uh, so that you can distinguish the contour cut colors from different settings. Now you can use other colors uh, that are not these, uh, but just know that they may not be recognized by other applications if you ever send them out to someone else. Uh, so if you choose a contour cut to be, uh, you know, this fuchsia color, really easy to see, that might be okay in Flexi's eyes because Flexi will make sure that that color is recognized in the software because it applied the contour cut. So it knows that that's what's going on here. But if you were to save this as an EPS file and send it to somebody else, 
that color will not necessarily be automatically recognized in their RIP software or whatever as a contour cut. Uh, these are industry standard names here. So if you were to apply something with the label cut contour, it will be able to be opened in any other RIP software and it'll automatically recognize that as a contour cut. So that's the nice thing there, uh, especially if you're sending this out to somewhere or, or something like that. This also applies to us as well. So if you're getting a file, and we'll talk a, a little bit about this as, as we get into the production manager, but we also recognize these values. And so if something comes in as a labeled as a cut contour, we can automatically see that and recognize that in production manager. And we'll take a look at that kind of workflow uh, here in a while. So I'm gonna use our gray color. Again, the reason why you might choose uh, one of these other colors is if you want to apply multiple contour cuts to the same file. So I could apply a contour cut like this. And then maybe if I wanted to do something like a, like a dotted line for a tear out or something like that, and I want to apply different settings, I would probably either go with a perf cut contour or I could use one of the other colors so that when we go into our rip and print and we go into our cut tab, it'll show us both colors. So I'll go ahead and apply those. Now, this other graphic here, this is kind of something where I've already kind of illustrated it here by selecting the rectangle. But this is a graphic here where, because it is a uh, vector artwork, you can see that these lines are going to come in here. It's going to try and contour cut around each one of these lines, which is obviously not ideal. And so when we decide to do a contour cut in this case, this is where maybe choosing one of our options up here, we'll go with solid again, and then maybe do something like a, an ellipse. And we can, you know, edit this proportionally or not. Uh, but the point is here is we can kind of adjust this and make some changes here uh, to this so that we get the right, the right size. And we don't have to try and worry about the contour cut going in here and kind of causing chaos. Cause this is, you know, a contour cut that tries to cut all these little single lines is gonna just destroy this graphic. It'll never work. So this would be a perfect candidate for a contour cut that goes around the edge uh, like this, uh, and then just kind of leaves this area blank. I'm gonna hit X here to just cancel out of that one. And let's just select this one and we'll work with this one for a minute here as we go to our rip and print. So we hit rip and print. We're just going to select our printer and our cutter. So to select our cutter, you go to the contour cut tab, and then we'll choose one of them from here. So the nice thing here is that based on the item that you have selected or the, the machine you have selected, it automatically chooses uh, a, a mark for you. So this is for the CG, uh, the Maki CG FX2. Uh, for the graph tech, it uses the graph tech marks. And for the Roland, it uses the Roland marks. So this is kind of a nice thing to have here. Uh, it automatically switches. And if there are any varying marks, uh, they're, they're available in this drop down menu. So, for example, for the graph tech, I can use uh, these marks that are pointed kind of, whoops, pointed inwards or outwards. Uh, and then you also have segmented marks and other marks like that. So you got a lot of different options for you in terms of what kind of marks you could choose for the graph tech. And that's where you would choose those options. The other thing to note here is uh, some of your machines, and we won't go through every uh, instance, but there are options in here. So if you have a machine like an HP cutter or a graph tech uh, that use barcodes, those options are going to be under the options tab, or uh, you might just see something like this on this side that just shows the mark thickness and mark length, things like that. Uh, if we switch over, for example, to the Mamaki and hit options, the options are slightly different. So you can, you can do the ID cut and intermediate crop marks here, things like that. So you can kind of define some of these settings in here about the specific crop marks that you did select. So down here below, uh, we are going to see our contour cut marks. So let's go back to our graph tech here. So down below, we have our, our cut marks. 
and our different cut colors. So if you had multiple cut colors, we would have those listed here. I can double click on these, and then this is where I'm going to set my settings for the cutter. Now, uh, I can choose to set them here, or if you prefer, you can also set them on the printer, or sorry, on the cutter. If you prefer to set them on the cutter, you would just choose none, and uh, Flexi will send no commands to the cutter, and the cutter will apply its own settings based on what you've chosen as default on the cutter. This particular graph tech has a bunch of predefined conditions. Um, none of these are going to be perfect, but what you want to do is choose one and then make some changes based on your material thickness and things like that, or depending on you know, the performance on how that cut goes. It might be a good idea to do a couple test cuts and just see, okay, with this particular material, perhaps maybe I need to increase the pressure a little bit. Um, and things like that to, to make sure it gets to the vinyl and but doesn't tear through the backing. So you've got all kinds of options here in terms of pressure setting, acceleration, and each machine is going to have something slightly different. Again, this kind of a screen that changes based on the device because they all use different lingo for uh, the different settings and things like that. So they'll all change based on your device. So if I go back to our guy here, and those are different size cutters, so that's why it keeps complaining about that. So now we've got different settings here for the Mamaki. So pressure knife, tool speed. So you've got a few different options here. So again, this will change. If you want to save some settings, you can just simply change some of the settings, hit save, and then give it a new name. And that will add that name to your list of, of uh, predefined presets here. So with all that kind of out of the way, we can just kind of make uh, multiple copies. So let's just do do 40 of them here. And I can choose under my contour cut if I want to do one set for all copies or not. If I do, if I turn that off, it gets a set of registration marks for each copy. Obviously, that's probably going to be a little too time consuming. Uh, but this puts four registration marks over the entire job. We'll kind of set that in the center here. And from here, we can send it several ways. We can send the print job only and then the contour job only, or we can send it as separate jobs. 90% of the time, you're going to be sending it as separate jobs unless something happened to the contour cut job and it didn't go through or something like that. You can resend the contour cut job only. Uh, you don't need to reprint it. Uh, you could just send the contour cut job again. But we'll send as separate jobs. And when we send it, I'm going to go ahead and set myself to hold and list. When we hit send and we hit our production manager, typically your print is going to start right away. Now, because I told it to hold and list, it's not going to do that. But in this particular case, uh, it would send a print right away. And then if we looked in our Mamaki, We've got a cut job here. And even though it displays only one uh, preview, it's going to go ahead and cut the entire job uh, of all copies. This is just kind of a, an expanded preview just to see what the once, uh, what a single contour cut looks like. But you'll notice down below here it says 40 copies. Again, this is a this is going to be your, your basic workflow. You're going to take that print out of your printer, put it on your cutter, get everything ready, and send it. And based on your device, you might have a few different things you might need to do, you know, line up the head to the to the registration marks and things like that, how you get that set up. And then you'll send the job and then go from there. So let's just walk through what the difference would be for a contour cut on a bitmap. So let's remove these guys out of the way here for a second and import a, a TIFF file. All right, so let's grab a couple of these. Let's grab this one and this one. And these are both bitmaps. Um, and so if we want to apply a contour cut to the bitmap, one of the things that you'll notice is that when I go to click my contour cut, and if I choose contour, 
it's always going to contour to the outside of the shape. And that's just because our object is doesn't have a transparent background yet. So any bitmap is going to do this. So the first thing you have to do then is define where or remove the background. In this case, this should be fairly simple. We can go to our bitmap menu, make transparent, and I'm just going to left click. Tolerance of 32 usually is pretty good for something like this. And I can hit apply. I'll do the same with this one, except for this time, we're going to click here. And in this case, I could either shift click, and you notice I get the little plus sign, and I could add selections to my area, or I can hit select similar, and it'll select all the similar white areas in the file. This is really what I want. I don't want to have to shift click all this. Select similar, selects all the highlights for me. I hit apply, and that will do it. So now this will this will be a good uh, place where we can apply a, 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 a cut, and then we can use our with holes option. So if I check this option, now you can see that it's going to do the inside as well. Because I made all that transparent, it does that all on the outside and the inside for me, and I can apply that. I'm going to go ahead and apply this as a contour one. And then on this one, I can do the same thing. So now, and I can leave this all the way to zero if I want to, to cut right on the edge, or I can go negative with it if I need to, if I want to cut a little bit on the inside so that I don't leave any white. We can hit apply. So that's, that's the basics of a bitmap. And then we'll send it the same way. We send it the same way, just we have to define or we have to get rid of that white transparent background that is kind of clouding the image or allow not allowing Flexi to kind of get in there and see the edge of the object. So that Make Transparent tool is going to, going to help you with that. What if you have a contour cut that you want to edit uh, or you want to change something with? Well, that's also an option. So let's talk about editing a contour cut. Let's come back to this file. Let's, let's get rid of all of our... Uh, Clear. Okay, we're going to clear our contour cuts here. So this is a really good example because it's got it's kind of an oval shape, but then it's got this little thing protruding out here, right? So if I go and I hit, let's do 0.125, or even if we go higher, you notice that even as I go higher, that protrusion kind of always just stays there. And let's just say I want to go far enough to where it's just an oval around this object. Well, I, I want to get rid of this. So I can apply my contour cut. And then I can come in here and I can say right click. And instead of clearing it, I'm going to separate the contour cut. When you apply a contour cut, it automatically groups it with the object that you've, that you've uh, applied the contour cut to. So it doesn't run away from you. Or when you move the file, you don't accidentally move the, the graphic, but not the contour contour cut and vice versa. So it groups it together. So we're just going to separate it here. And that's all we're doing. We're really not doing anything to the graphic or to the contour cut itself, except for separating it or ungrouping it from the object so that we can edit it. And then at this point, we can take this and we can edit it with our point editing tools like we would any other file. So I can come in here. And I can say, let's optimize or optimize by, th by a three-point arc. Let's zoom in a little bit. I can choose a point here and here. And I can kind of decide what I want that to look like. Hit enter. And just like that now, I've got my... I fixed my uh, my contour cut. So now it kind of looks a little bit better. I'm going to exit out of the tool. And now I can send this, send this this way. So that's one way of taking care or editing it. Now I'm going to probably just go ahead and group this together. Probably a smart idea so that, again, it doesn't uh, get separated in any way when I send it to the machine. And now I have a nice edited uh, 
contour cut. This could be helpful in all kinds of different ways, especially if the contour cut is not necessarily doing what you want it to do, or there's just something that you just want to get rid of. Uh, a lot of times the contour cut may not do exactly what you want it to. And so that might be a really good way to edit that and just kind of correct any, any issues that you see that might cause problems on your machine. Uh, you know, cutting, overcutting, or, or creating some kind of little piece that's not necessary. Um, so that, that's a good way to do that. One last thing that we want to kind of talk about too is contour cuts from an existing line. So let's just take the same file because I kind of like it. And it has a line already on it. So I'm going to right click on this, ungroup. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And then for whatever reason, let's just say we want to print this and we want to use this blue line as our contour cut, despite the fact that it's going to slice off the edge of the A there, uh, we want to use this line. It's already there, but let's just say it was from a customer and they just put a pink line. They didn't really apply a contour cut necessarily. Uh, it just came in as a pink line. So Flexi doesn't really see it as a contour cut, but that doesn't matter. We can always just go to our um, our options and make a contour cut. So let's see here. Where is that option? I have drawn a blank. Here we go, just for a second. Okay, so under the Arrange menu, you can choose Contour Cut and then just make a contour cut. So any cut or any line any shape that you have selected at the moment, when I click on this, it's going to make it a contour cut. Now, it didn't really change the color a whole lot, but it did label it as a contour cut. So when I select this object and go to rip and print, it has recognized my contour cut. So it hasn't changed the color, but it just labeled it as contour cut one. So if you have existing graphics that you're bringing in uh, that have already drawn artwork, there's no need to reproduce a contour cut line if it's not necessary. We can just go ahead and take any line, any existing vector line, and create that into a contour cut. And again, the process will be the same. We send it to Rip and Print, we send it to Production Manager, and things like that. So what would be like a secondary workflow then? Okay, so we, we know we can... We can come into Flexi, we can import graphics, we can put contour cuts on, on vector artwork, we can edit it, we can do it on bitmaps. How about if we want to skip Flexi altogether? Well, let's maximize this here. Let's just delete some of the stuff that we already have in here. We can actually do that. So I've saved an EPS on the desktop. I'm going to add this job. And what would we call it? Uh, let's do it by AI EPS. Here we go. So this was a file that was created um, as an EPS with uh, a contour cut already added to it. And it was labeled as a cut contour. So when I double click on this, it's going to do this, which I'll move it up here. If I go to my workflow tab, Flexi's already recognized the fact that there's a contour cut here and it's already added the registration marks for me. But I could come in here and I can see that this option is already checked. Send cut pass from the job to the following device. So it already knows that there's a contour cut there and it's gonna send it. And we can come into our cut tab then and we can set all the settings just like that. So if you already have a, an EPS file that you know has a contour cut, you can actually just skip the whole Flexi part altogether, especially if the file doesn't need any modifications, and you can come right into Production Manager, add the file, make multiple copies, do all the things that you would normally do in Flexi right here. I can come in here and do this. I can choose, you know, how many, uh, if we go into our, Labels and marks. I've got my marks here. I've got my options for my marks, just like I do in Flexi. Um, I can choose my graph tech type marks here. They're all listed there. 
So I can do all the changes I need to right even from here. And it's not a, not a, not a problem. How about if you have a file that doesn't have a contour cut? So now new in Flexi, we is the ability to create a contour cut right from within production manager. So let's just add a job and let's go to our samples here. Uh, nope, wrong folder, Flexi. All right, and then let's choose one of our TIFF files because um, it's all readable. And let's just go with this guy because it's kind of easy to, to demonstrate here. So this obviously doesn't have a contour cut. It's a TIFF file. And we already saw that this particular TIFF file, the, the background is not transparent. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see it. 500 percent actually let's go 800 make this really easy to see okay so we have a file here and you can obviously see when you open production manager or when you open the job properties you don't see the contour cut tab here but we have two options we can go into our, our workflow tab and if we don't really care about a contour cut or anything like that we just want to cut the square out you do have the option for cut along the, the border so it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut along the page border, which is, or along the graphic border. So it's going to cut right along here. And it's, you can see that our contour cut tab has already popped up. And it's applied a border to the edge of this file and some registration marks automatically for us. So that's one way you can apply a cut. And this is really nice for little files like this that you just want to print and cut. You don't necessarily need a, a contour cut next to it perhaps big production kind of stuff uh, where you're going to be doing a lot of these. The other option is go back to our workflow tab. Let's take that off. And then you'll notice that we also now have this transparency tab. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff in here that we've talked about in a different, uh, in another webinar, but the one that we're going to focus on here is the create transparent background. This is going to allow us to create a contour cut. So because we can now create a background or we can make this background transparent just like we did in Flexi, all I have to do, my tolerance right now is set to zero, but we can adjust this up and down. I can click on this. I can adjust my tolerance if I want to, you know, and, and move this uh, up and down. I can also click uh, select similar areas in case I want to do that, uh, similar to the way we did in Flexi. And then we've got this little option right here. It says create contour pass. So now that we've created a background here, we've eliminated the white background. I can now create a contour path and we can see that in pink. And again, just like in Flexi, you know, we can go negative with this line if we want to, or we can go positive with this line if we want this to cut out a little from the edge here. I'm going to leave it at that just so it's easily visible to us here. And now when we check that box, we have a new tab here for our cut options. And we can come in here and we can set just like we could before all of our settings for our cutter right here. So this is a really kind of a powerful feature uh, simply because now you don't necessarily have to bring in files from Flexi if you don't want to. Uh, you can bring them into to Production Manager, create a transparent background on a, on a, on a bitmap, a JPEG, a PNG, a uh, TIFF, whatever option you have there. You can create this transparent background and create a contour cut right in Production Manager without ever having to open Flexi at all. So this kind of gives you some flexibility in your workflow, you know, depending on what you do. It uh, gives those, those of you who don't necessarily use Flexi as much for designing and, and then maybe you use Illustrator, this is an option that's really nice for you guys because now you don't have to worry about necessarily creating a contour cut inside of Flexi and then passing it over and worrying about, you know, mistakes happening in import or, or transferring or things like that. You can just pull those images right into Production Manager. Um, 
or even if you do use Flexi, uh, the option for you know creating a perimeter cut uh, is really nice because then you can just grab a heap of files. Perhaps maybe you have 30 or 40 different little JPEGs like this that you're going to be cutting and you just need a border cut. You can throw them all into Production Manager and apply a contour cut to them. What's really nice is that if you go ahead and set up a, a preset that has those settings pre-applied to it. So for example, uh, I could come in here, cut along page border, set my margin to whatever I want it to, and then I can save this as a preset. And if I save this as a preset, when I go to add job, I can have a default preset selected right here that when I select all those jobs, it would apply a contour cut to those jobs automatically, even if there's 30 files or whatever, or how many you select. It just grabs them, imports them in, throws a, a border contour cut line around it, puts the marks on it, and then off you're off to the races. You can just send that in, nest it, send it out, and you've got a job basically ready to go. So there's a lot of different options for you available now with the contour cutting in Production Manager. We've got the contour cutting in Flexi. So there's a lot of options, and I think we'll, you guys will really, uh, hopefully you can take advantage of these options and make your workflow better, make things smoother, maybe make things a little easier for you. So that is contour cutting in a nutshell. I know there's a lot of spe device specific stuff we didn't really go over, but we do have some specific webinars that we talked about uh, for the graph techs um, and for the HPs and a few others that have very unique uh, workflows with barcodes and stuff like that. So I would encourage you to check those out um, if you are kind of curious about those specific machines. So any questions about, about anything contour or Frexula related? Yeah, I had a couple questions as you were presenting, and uh, I'll go through these. But yeah, definitely, if you have more questions, feel free to put them in and we'll get to them. Um, I'm going to do the most recent one first because it applied to the last thing you were doing. Rebecca is asking, is that path saved with the file? Uh, the path is all through Production Manager. So... Um, we could try and export it, but I don't think that that is going to export with the file, but we could try. Um, let's just add it here, click OK, and then let's try and save as. I don't think so because it's going to try and save it as a TIFF, which is basically the original format of the file. Um, and TIFF files don't typically hold on to data like that. So if anything, it's probably just going to end up pink. Um, I'm not sure why it's not opening. Open file. OK. Maybe if I open it with paint, <laughs> Windows is not liking the, the decision I've made to open this with. So let's open it with, uh, hmm, see if we can open it with Microsoft Paint. Seems kind of ridiculous, but yeah, it doesn't look like uh, it saved that file with it, which I kind of wouldn't expect it to, uh, mainly because this is just data that's generated. Um, uh, from the production manager itself. It doesn't really get saved with the file. It does get saved if you export it as a PLT file, which if you export, you can save it as a PRT, which is basically a native format file for your device. Um, but that really isn't super helpful because you can't really open it in any other program but production manager. So I guess the answer to that question is probably no. It doesn't really save it, in, at least in the production manager side of it, it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to go back to the big first question now. Andrew asked um, when you were showing that you could change the, 
the cut lines to different colors. Why would you need different colors instead of just transparent for all contours since it's just cutting and not printing? Let's see. Uh, if you were cutting now in the in the particular circumstance where we pulled in the bitmap and um, when we pulled in the bitmap uh, and had to use the transparent option, you actually can't. If we were to remove uh, the contour cut from this object, even though it has a transparent background that we can see, obviously it's transparent. We actually cannot cut this. I try and select this and cut it because it's a bitmap. It's not going to, well, see, it, it tries to grab everything else on the page. So if I delete everything else that's on here and try and just grab this, there's no cuttable object because it's a bitmap. So <clears throat> um, that's where we have to use our contour cut lines. I don't know if that was what you were asking necessarily, but with these particular settings here at least in flexi you have to have a contour cut in order for it to know what to do um in order yeah at least with bitmaps um because it doesn't a bitmap doesn't have like any line data that flexi can use for contour cut um just as a quick follow-up to could before you move on to the next question i know i talked about you could you can't save this particular thing as a PDF or something else that you could import later. But if you're worried about a one-off becoming a repeat job, uh, Flexi also now does have options for, um, uh, let's see here. And I don't, I don't know why I'm, blanking here you can create an order so if i right click on the job and this is with all the settings included i can create an order what this basically does is it allows me to create an order with a customer name and, and some comments and stuff like this and if i save it if i ever want to run that job again whether i have it in production manager or not uh, I can order what's called a reprint. Um, order reprint under the file menu. I can grab that job and all my orders would be listed here. I can grab that and I can send it now or I can add and hold. So if you had created a one-off job for a customer and you saved it, under this, you could actually order a reprint. And the, the nice thing is about this particular feature is it saves everything. So everything that you did, the ICC profile, the cut contour settings, it saves all of it so that the job could be exactly reproduced as it was the last time you did it. Instead of trying to remember all the settings that you did, this would be one way to do that. So anyway, that was just kind of a, a thing that I wanted to mention because you'd mentioned you had mentioned reprints right and that's new in flexi 22. correct that is new yeah. for flexi 22. okay let's go back to question from gilbert how exact do you have to be on setting up laser on registration marks uh well, you know that's kind of an interesting question so uh depends not terribly accurate so let's just kind of look at a, an example here Let's go back up to 800% here. Let's just kind of do a visual on this so you guys can see. Um, let's choose uh, our graph tech. Let's make sure we're using four points. Okay. So uh, when you, for in, in, in the example of a graph tech, and this kind of is the same for a lot of other devices as well, you're going to come over to this corner. So this bottom right-hand corner, and this is where you're going to set up your marks to. So as long as, at least in my experience, because we've used a lot of graph tech cutters before, 
I've used a lot of Rollins. I've used a lot of Mamakis that use similar marks. So it, typically, if you're using a mark style like this, as long as the laser is in here somewhere, or in the graph text case, you, you put the point of the blade right here. As long as it's within here, it usually can find it. Um, Unless the only circumstance where I would say, I mean, obviously, if it's way out, it's, for example, if you put your cursor way out here or your your pointer outside of it out here, then it's not going to work. It's probably going to look in a different place. Uh, as, so that that's probably something I check with your machine manufacturer to make sure how accurate. But normally it doesn't need to be like pixel perfect usually as long as you're within the general area so somewhere in this little triangle would be fine or as long as you're within like if you use the rolling marks and they have the little round marks uh like this uh yeah that's the gr640 uh let's zoom out here uh where's our contour cut Cut long page border. Why isn't giving us our marks here? Here we go. So the Roland uses these marks. So as long as you're within the circle, you're fine. Um, uh, with the HP, with the barcode, they have a little bit of a different standard. So it kind of depends on your machine and what you're doing. But I, normally, this doesn't have to be pixel perfect. If you're having to do, well, Let's just, uh, I'm going to take one very off case scenario that you might run into. If you ever have to use those funky marks like this, and this, it'll be easier if I pull it out into Flexi here, uh, just because they're easier to, to get to. Um, but if you ever have to use these marks that look like this, these four point, this is for a machine that doesn't have automatic registration, automatic registration marks and those marks look like this they're like there's a, they're called bomb sites then you do have to be pretty accurate but that's just because you're doing it manually versus automatically um and so that's the only time where you really have, have to be pixel perfect um or the closer to perfect you are the better but normally that's not the case normally that kind of stuff is pretty automated so if you're having trouble with it not reading the marks because of where you're placing it, it might be worth checking, okay, where should I be placing it? Am I supposed to be doing it based off the laser or am I supposed to be doing it off the knife blade or you know, where should I be placing this? And then also there's also settings like for sensitivity and stuff like that on the cutter itself that could also be affecting reading marks, um, things like that. Uh, some of these, uh, some of these machines. So, like for example, I believe that for the like graph tech, you can actually come in here and make the marks thicker if you're having a hard time getting them to read, or you can make them thinner, you can make them taller, shorter. So that might also help if you're having problems with registration marks. Yeah, Gilbert had a follow-up question on that. Do you have to make manual adjustments through driver options? I think you kind of touched on that, but um, was there anything else you wanted to add to that? No, I would just say that if um, if if the cut is coming out off or weird, um, it might be worth calling. You can call our tech support and find out, and, and they may be able to walk through a couple scenarios. They might be able to identify whether it's the machine side or or – or flexi side, but um, typically, if the machine does the the automatic seeking on its own uh, and it finds all four marks, uh, it should be fine. But if it if it's still cutting off, we might there can be some adjustments that can be made on the on the cutter side. It's and this is where again I'd probably refer you to tech support to have you kind of have them walk you through this. But you can do what they call an output size compensation for the cutter. And basically, if the cutter or the printer is doing something weird where it's not cutting correctly, you can do an output size compensation where you basically print 
an object with a specific size and then you measure it the most accurately as you can. And if it's slightly off, it will create a compensation number. So let's say it's 11.99, right? So just slightly off, it creates a compensation variable for you and it'll compensate it for it in the cutter itself. But I would probably, before you go, this is like the extreme measure. Before you do that, I'd probably call tech support and say, hey, you know, is this something in the software? Is it a bug or, um, or what is it? Also, just along that lines, we just released a new version of Flexi, uh, Flexi 22.0.1. So if any of you guys don't have that, I would go ahead and update to it. It has a bunch of stuff that is fixed. Um, and so if you maybe you're running 22.0, I would probably suggest that you upgrade to that first. See if that fixes the problem because we addressed a bunch of issues. If it still is an issue, maybe call tech support. Or maybe they could walk you through some settings and figure out what's going on exactly. Spend a little more time with you one on one. All right, going to go back to a question from Bill. Are there quick ways to create contour cuts with bleeds? Uh, I mean, by quick, I mean. It depends, I guess, on how you're doing it. Uh, uh, you, typically, if you want a cut with a bleed on it, you would just simply apply the contour cut with a negative value to it, um, whatever that is. Um, and it'll save the last settings that you used. Um, so the next time I come up and do a contour cut, you know, I can always use that same setting. In the production manager, um, you could probably use a, now this is going to be a tricky one because I know that you can set up a contour cut like we talked about here where we cut along the page border and you could set a margin up as a negative and that will cut into the border a little bit. Um, with the make transparent option, this is something that I probably would have to test and find out. Or you, I don't know if you can apply something like this to an image and have it apply. You, it might. Uh, the only question might be the background color. I guess if the background color is always white, then it would work. Um, this would be tricky because this could be file dependent. You know, you might have a file that doesn't have a perfectly white background and then it it doesn't apply the, you know, the transparency and the contour cut correctly. So that this was kind of a tricky one in terms of using presets with it. Uh, because if the, if the background is not perfectly white, then it's probably going to have an issue with applying it. So if it's like 0001, and 1% black or even 0.5% black, it's not going to apply because it's not matching exactly. So um, in terms of automating it that way, there's not, that would be the fastest way is just to apply it individually or in, in Flexi, um, which you could do it in a large batch. If you had a bunch of objects selected in Flexi, uh, you could, make a bunch of images transparent at the same time, but, um, and then just apply the contour cut. Hopefully yeah, that Bill, answers your question. He just had a follow-up comment saying, I'm, I'm already pretty good at creating bleeds using outlines or occasionally drawn shapes when the bleed needs multiple colors. He just wanted to know if he was missing something automatic. No, no, I don't think so. I think the way you're doing it is probably going to be the, one of the better ways. Okay. Going back to a comment or a question from Etzel, what does tolerance do? Uh, tolerance is, um, and this is probably a terrible example for that. So let's import another file. Um, uh, let's add, this is a good one for that. So let's open this up here and go to, and this applies to the tolerance to um, Flexi and in here. So if I create a, a transparent background, you can obviously clearly see that this is not perfectly white. So this this is got it's got like a, a little bit of everything in there. So if you increase the tolerance, 
it increases the amount of colors that it will accept as it creates the contour cut. So you can see as I lessen it, there's fewer and fewer points that will actually select. And as I increase the tolerance, it's saying, okay, here's my original point. And this is, you can kind of look at that number. It's 249, 249, 248. And it says, okay, give me a tolerance of 15. So it's adding colors to that that are similar to it. And as I slide it this way, it includes more and more colors. Now, obviously there's a, a little bit of a problem with this file because the white kind of starts to merge in with his her dress here. And so there's no way to produce a boundary. So this is something that I never would try and do a contour cut with here. I would try and do it in Flexi and I might end up just drawing my own contour cut um, just because this is kind of a, a bad background. This is kind of like your worst case scenario in terms of trying to apply a contour cut um, and making a, a background transparent. In fact, I probably wouldn't even use this file. I'd probably try something else just because getting rid of this background would be a pain. Um, but so that's what the tolerance does. It just allows more colors. So if there's a slight variation in the background, you can account for that with the tolerance setting, which works really, really well um, in most cases, except for, you know, in this particular case where, where it starts to eat into the dress a little bit. Ariel asked, how do you draw your own contour cut? So that's where I would probably use the 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 example that we did in the uh, I think it was in the third example where we created a contour cut we or we made a contour cut uh, you can do that several different ways you can draw a circle like this select it and make that a contour cut uh, you can use any one of the shape tools you can use the bezier path tool if you prefer you know creating pass like this, you know, either way I can great. And then I would just use the option here to make contour cut and then, and then do that. Um, the other option would be is to create a contour cut with the object and then go back and edit it a little bit to make it and adjust it to what you want it to be. Um, say if I don't like this particular contour cut, I want it to change a little bit. I could clear no, not clear, separate the contour cut. And then I can go back in here and say, you know what, I don't like the way this is doing this down here. I would rather, you know, this do something else. And so I would come in here and I could grab my point editing tool and I could start adjusting some of these points, you know, selecting a bunch of them, moving them uh, like this or whatever, and adjusting the existing contour cut line. So that kind of is a... It, it, you can do it either way. Uh, you can draw your own just by using one of the drawing tools, like the pencil. You know, I could create a contour cut, you know, or whatever like that, and it just creates a shape. And then I just go to my contour cut option, say make a contour cut, and it turns it into. Um, so yeah, any way like that would be a good way to do it. And Ariel, in response to your question earlier, where can we watch these videos again? Um, since you signed up for this webinar, you'll receive the recording of it in your email later today. We also have on our YouTube channel, uh, which is where the recording will be. We have all of our other past webinars and other videos. If you're interested in contour cutting, we have plenty of videos on that and other things. So um, give our YouTube channel a search and you can, you can learn a lot there. Um, Gilbert just asked, Aaron, maybe you can just briefly talk about how to update your Flexi. He said, I have a monthly subscription of 21. Do I have to pay additional for an update or will it automatically do it? Uh, it will automatically do it. Now, the, one of the things to, to kind of remember about, um, the, um, the updates is that they don't, we don't you should get a notification or something like that eventually uh we don't push notifications out to everybody all at once because we don't want our servers to crash um and then that just ends up for a bad experience for everybody so what what we typically do is um 
you'd go to, and let me just pull up a browser here. So you're going to go to saicloud.com. You're going to log in with your email address and password. So let me go ahead and just do that real quick, and I'll do this off screen here. All right, so now you're going to see all your softwares listed. So you're going to click on the different licenses that you have, and you'll download it. So let's just say we are going to download the update, an update for our FlexiMac product. And you just hit download now. Uh, it'll tell you what your active build or version is right up here. You'll just hit download now. It'll start to download the software. Uh, and then it'll prompt you to... As you download it, you run the executable file. Uh, some browsers will automatically run it for you. Uh, once you have the installer open, uh, it'll walk you through the process. Um, Flexi does have, uh, and this is also new to 22, but it does have a preference transferring, a new preference transferring option. So as you go through the installation process, It'll ask you at some point, do you want to transfer the, the settings from another version? And you can tell it what settings you want to transfer, and it will copy all of your settings over uh, from profiles to, you know, pretty much anything you've got in there. Um, and so that's, that's the easiest way to do that. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, tech support is also willing to help. Um, so if you get to somewhere and you're stuck and you're not quite sure, you know, give them a call um, and they'd be most likely that uh, they can help you with it. But it's a pretty easy process. You just download it from your cloud account, run the installer. Uh, when the option appears for preferences, you can have it transfer the preferences or you can not, however you want to do it. Uh, and then it just basically reinstalls on top of your existing install. And I'll say with Flexi 22, this is made even easier with, um the introduction of SAI Connect, which Aaron uh, installs automatically when you download Flexi 22, right? Yep, correct. And um, it's just a way that, uh, so it eliminates the need to go onto the internet to download new versions. Um, it'll notify you through Connect um, when you have any updates or... Uh, so let me open like that. that up here real quick for you so you can kind of see what he's talking about. Um, so let me launch it here. And just to be clear, Gilbert, if you have a monthly subscription, you don't have to pay uh, anything additional to get the new version. You're automatically, you can upgrade to the new version. And I believe we have a webinar on Connect already, or we're going to be doing one. I'm not exactly sure, um, but this is a new feature in the Flexi 22. It's, it's a little tray app that goes in your in your tray and it shows you all of your subscriptions. So I can see, now I don't have anything in here for, for this particular license, but um, you would see all the data. It's like all your prints and stuff. You've got buttons for Find My Font and, and other things in here. And then you can look at all your subscriptions uh, if you want to. So all the different licenses that I have, of course, these are all test licenses and whatnot, but I can, you would probably only see one or two and you would see if there's an update, I can click here and here's, I can see all my licenses that require license updates, what the available version of the build is and what the current version of the build is. And I, if I need to update that, I can just click it right there. So if you have 22 already, then this is a feature that that's in 22. Um, so you would have the connect available to you. If not, just go to your SAI cloud account and you can kind of do the same thing. But going, going forward, this app is kind of how we want to try and control that and kind of help people. Because a lot of times it's like you, if you don't have access right to the cloud account and you don't have it up, it's hard to know. And it's, you know, you might not see it. This way it's kind of right there. Uh, you, you'll have a button in Flexi that you can just click on and it'll pull it right up and, you know, you can check to see if you have any updates available. So that'll be something that's going to be, we're going to be, you know, 
making better and improving and, and adding new features too. So it'll be a really nice tool to have uh, as well. Okay, last question that I see from Andrew. How do I make a custom background to words aside from the pattern fill option? Um, well, uh, you could do, you could also do masks. Um, so you could also create an image, uh, take some tests and mask like an image to the background. Um, that would be one way of doing it. If you don't want to use the pattern fill, of course, the pattern fill, you can also define, um, any way you want. And I don't know if you've played with that yet. So I can take any pattern and create a fill out of it. So let's say I want to create this, this pattern with the test. I can go into, now it's been a while since I've done this. So give me a minute. Um, color define pattern and it should put it in my yeah it's right here so and if i click here now it's going to fill it with a bunch of tests so, so, so the, you can create patterns and you can do this with whatever you want so you could import a bitmap and create that bitmap as a pattern. So you could fill in a, a bunch of objects, or uh, like I said, you could also do, you could import uh, something. And if you don't want to use the, the pattern necessarily, uh, you could import a graphic and, um, it's probably gonna be look terrible, but you can grab this and I believe we want to move this forward to the front. and we can mask it. Uh, and then if we don't, you know, then this way you can actually customize. If I click on select within, I can move the image around and it will change, you know, how it applies that mask to the object uh, like that. So I can kind of get pinpoint accuracy on, on that. So that would be the other way uh, to do it other than pattern fills or gradients, things like that. Hopefully that answers your question or helps kind of give you a few more ideas. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think we'll go ahead and close it out for today. Thanks, Aaron, for answering those questions. And thanks everyone for asking those questions. Um, thank you all for joining us for this Flexi webinar. Our next webinar will be about some of the best things to know when designing and printing with white. That'll be on September 13th, and we hope to see you there. We'll have the link to sign up for that in the webinar follow-up email that you'll receive later today. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter so you won't miss out on any webinars or other announcements, and you can sign up for that on our website. Thank you again for attending. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.